Um, we are welcome back to New Realities. I am here again with Sheila Seppi, the co-host for these interviews we've been doing and uh, leading up to the upcoming walk-in conference that is happening this weekend, right, Sheila? Um, what is it? January 8th and 9th, Saturday and Sunday. And why don't you just give a quick overview and then you can introduce the guests. So Absolutely. what do we got? <clears throat> I am going to share screen. Here we go. So for those of you who have not been joining us, we have the walk-in conference coming up this weekend. It's a two-day conference that we're extremely excited about because as we've been saying, yes, this is a walk-in conference, but it's also more about conscious expansion and really creating community so that we all can synergistically elevate the consciousness of the planet. And so we have some phenomenal speakers that will be with us. We have Nicholas David Nguyen, and Nicholas uh, will be talking with us about soul contracts. We have Debbie Grace, who will be talking with us about the Gaia connection that she has and working with the crystalline grids and the importance of bringing ceremony back into our lives. We have Claire Candy Howe, and Claire is an embodiment of Archangel Ariel. We have Karen Swain, who actually uh, gave me your name, William, who we'll be interviewing today. But Karen uh, is also a member of Galactic Councils herself. We have Zoe Pennett, who now goes by Sage Oneness. And during a conversation that we were having, she discovered uh, through her team, her spiritual team, that in fact she is a walk-in. But she also is bringing a host of spiritual teachings to the planet. We have Jaden Fox, and Jaden is a walk-in who really has spent his life and dedicated himself to assisting other walk-ins to integrate their energies onto the planet and to help them to discover what their mission on this planet is. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to skip William because we have him here with us today and we'll be talking with him. We have James Farley who is also going to be with us and James brings in a beautiful shamanic earth connection where he works with the plant people and he's going to do some channeling for us. We have Stephanie Lodge who also is the embodiment of an angelic presence on the planet and we have Jason Addison Ames who works to connect with the higher realms and does some channeling and to bring in more of that God energy and angelic presence and anchor it onto the planet. And so at the end of each of our day we will have a panel discussion. Day one uh, we interviewed this week Rosalind Horowitz um, Agi Nost, Nori, Omar, Rob, Alan, of course, was here, and we had a wonderful uh, dialogue about our connection with our galactic families, and we're going to continue that connection on day two as we have a second panel discussion, and then we will have on here, we'll have Marina Serene, yeah. we'll have Bridget Holiday. Emma Louise Living Soul, Dr. Richard Horowitz, and Alan Neal, myself, and then Sunday panelists that want to join us. So we have a jam-packed weekend for you. If you have not registered, please go to wishalliance.org and click to register here, or you can go directly to Portal to Ascension and register there. Be sure to put in PTA25 to receive your 25% discount on your registration fee. So we're very excited about this weekend. We've been talking about it all month long, and we really hope that uh, you guys will be joining us. Yeah, so to get a real feel of what a walk-in is like, in case you're new to it, this is why we're talking to William Linville today. William, yes. welcome welcome to the program. Do you want to do a quick introduction to William? Um, sure. Sheila? Sure, absolutely. So William is a divine presence of clear creator consciousness that has transcended all of the lower levels of the physical form as well as all of the survival levels of the physical makeup that came with an embodiment which he stepped into on a surgical table in 1996. 
He is here on the planet to assist you to clear out all of your egoic conflicts and structures that have held you back from fully, completely marrying with your higher and lower levels. So, William, welcome today. I'm very excited to have you here. Um, you arrived on the planet about three years earlier than I did. So, um, I'm, I'm very excited to hear all about your story and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, like... How did you know you were even a walk-in? You want to start with your walk-in transformation? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I came into the body um, on December 20th, 1996, at about 3.58 in the afternoon, undergoing, from what I call the old will, undergoing the gastric bypass surgery. And the gastric bypass surgery is where they take three quarters of your tummy out and leave one quarter. And what happened from there is I'll never forget waking up coming into the body, but then waking up cognitively in the body as the old will with our agreement was to clear out all of his debris, clear out all of his conflicts. And then from there, watching how the body went through a major transformation. Now I opened my eyes to the most amazing, still the most amazing sunset over San Diego that I had ever seen. It was on the seventh floor of Mercy Hospital that I came in. And looking out the window, the first thing I saw was the most amazing sunset. <clears throat> the sun was still pretty high, but it was going down in all the oranges, all the beauty, all the astronomical color esquenesses that played out. And then what happened, you know, one thing led to another, you know, came back to full, I guess I'd call recovery. And then the Will family monad, as I call it, came in, you know, one by one you know, sister, bride, or a wife, um, brother, uh, mother, and all that fun stuff. And it was interesting, the most interesting thing occurred. I knew who they were as far as what part they played. Okay, you're the mom, you're the partner, you're the sister, you're the brother, okay, you're the nieces, you're the nephews, on and on and on. And it was interesting because I knew what part they played, but technically I had no idea who they were. So it's like, okay, accessing the old will memories. Okay, this is the mom, that's the, that's the uh, wife, that's the brother, sister, on and on and on. But it was really puzzling for me because I was sitting back in my bed. It's like, what the heck is going on here? Who are these people on a physical, personal level? And then I went beyond the physical, personal level into picking up the body, left the hospital several days later, and then what started to happen is the body started to shut down from the ability to walk to extreme pain, the myelin sheath of the nerves being fully thoroughly eaten away. And with all of that stuff going on, it was like, okay, well, what's going on here? I have no clue what's going on. I just, I'm in the body on this planet. You know, everything's different. I have no idea what's going on. But then it went to, so to the brain being fried, extreme pain, as I mentioned, then a jurgesic pain pump and none of the medication work, morphine, dilaudid, and uh, fentanyl, sufentanyl, and codeine and codeine number four and all these other things. It's like, well, what the heck is going on here? Well, I ended up on a spirit experimental medication made from snail poison down from Africa at the Thornton Hospital where I was going in for experimental treatments. And I, I think it was called SR55, which was the experimental name for the drugs. Well, what that did was fried the brain. So the brain was fried. So I'd say, hi, I'm Will. Hi, I'm Will. Hi, I'm Will. Without ever really realizing I said it even once. And then that went into the rest of the body, the heart and the lungs. I was told medically speaking several times that, okay, those are the last two things to go. And then basically your journey's over. And then one night sitting on my front porch at, at, that, at that time in, in my handicap home, a neighbor with the MS said, you know, I know this person up in Escondido that I'd love to meet you, uh, that used to be my neighbor, neighbor, and I would love for you both to meet. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm game. So we got her a number, we got her address, we made an appointment, and sure enough, I started, I met with her a few times with you guys of facilitation and healing the body. But what, one thing led to another, and she'd do energy work, all this fun stuff, and it was, it was turning the corner <clears throat> mentally, emotionally, 
And then she did a lot of research and she came up with the term walk-in and, and I scratched my head. I said, what, what the heck's a walk-in? Because I saw it everywhere in town. You know, walk-ins welcome, get your haircut, on and on on. Now, so she explained to me during the, so, during the surgery, the old will stepped out of the body and it just kept showing up, I believe in her dream states. And that was when I stepped in. Now, it was really confusing at that time, being raised from the old will memories, uh, born again Christian, blah, blah, blah. And then all the way to the breakdown of the karmic agreements between him and his wife at that time. And then one thing led to another. And within that, that went on, I'm kind of giving you the fast track pic picture, but that went on for about two and a half years. I was in a wheelchair for two and a half years in extreme pain. And then once we started dressing the stuff and started to even getting into what she would say, the celestial Christ consciousness on and on and on celestial, not just being planetary, but from the star Sirius, which is where I originated from, you know, all this stuff started flooding right back in one download after another download connection with the Pleiades, Orion's, um, the Pashants, on and on and on, and one unveilment after another unveilment, and then Sananda started presenting on my front porch where I would be sitting at that time, getting out of my chair, sitting on the ground, and now I understand it as grounding, but at that time, it was just you know, trying to find somewhere comfortable, and then one thing led to another, and the body, after all the mental, emotional baggage, was seen, addressed, even going through quantum leaps, even laying in bed for, seriously, no, no, um, no exaggeration, for two weeks straight, just sobbing, going through past life, past life, past life. And I say I, but technically it wasn't me that was sobbing, it was the body that was sobbing, so, so, hello, sobbing and releasing to where it was started making more and more room for me to fully integrate within the body. So I passed a threshold of half in, half out, kind of like, you know, what you would do when at first separation, where you would step into the animal kingdom, learn and express love through procreation, then pop right out, then pop into another animal, on and on and on. Well, that part, that threshold had been crossed. And then that led to waking up to the Magdalena, the Mary, and the Kuan Yin and Paramahansa Yogananda, you know, even Gandhi as well. And all these two ones that kept presenting and presenting, you would have thought they were standing, you know, in single file. And then that went into the angelic art, into the archangelic realms. And, you know, these are all labels, but they're all frequencies and tones of divinitization. So it went from there to the Pleiadians, as I mentioned, that started showing up surrounding me, including the Cryon and Abraham, on and on and on, as the collectives that they are, to get me to the point where I was able to get out of the wheelchair and never looked back, really. Just started going right into you know, vocational rehabilitation, on and on and on, and then they wanted me to be electrician, and I said, no, massage. You know, there was a, that, and the massage, therapy on that fun stuff to learn how to be in a body on a planet. So I hope that wasn't too much. I was just kind of giving you the short version. That is awesome. great. That is a great overview. So did you come in for a mission? Do you feel like you're on a special on purpose? You've been around for a long time now and I'm sure she'll ask some questions, but I'm just curious about your mission. Yeah, my mission, if I have one, I would say to assist, to fully embody my higher levels through the body lower levels in the whole body entirely, to purify it, divinitize it, bringing it into complete and total alignment with the whole consciousness of light, consciousness of love, and constantly raising up the vibrational frequencies of megahertz of light to be able to assist and facilitate and to expand even further. And also working with, you know, I was given all these lines at one time from Sananda, um, which was, um, you know, for healer, heal thyself, but then it went beyond healer, heal thyself into I am everything for every man, which doesn't really have to do with gender. It has to do with million species. So it's basically to be able to assist and facilitate whether you're an engineer, a CEO, or 
a janitor or how all of it comes together to serve a purpose, but also connecting grid systems, activating light bodies, including clearing out the mental, physical, and emotional debris. And let's just call it debris, but we'll call it ego. We can call it all these split levels and dualistic principles of consciousness to bring forth you that's right here in the middle to dissolve it all from the inside out to where you don't have anything coming up internally or coming at you externally that is not of divine order. So for people that are in listening, divine right order. Yeah. So people that are watching us today and they're hearing you talk about clearing out all of the debris, can you give them some, you know, practical at home methods that they can begin so that they too can release those things that no longer serve them? Absolutely. So right now, let's just all take a nice, slow, deep breath in through the nose, all the way to below your navel, all the way into the crater chakra of a vortex. Let's just hold for the inhale for 12, hold for 12. And now let's just gently exhale as slow as you can for the count of 12 through the mouth. Let's focus our eyes right here towards the third eye. And now, because that's what gets the mind, the thought forms, the ego out of the way. So we're hitting the stop or pause button per se. I prefer stop because it's not like it's going to pick up from where it left off. So now let's bring our consciousness right through your heart. If you need to, or you feel you need to, just put your hands right here on the heart. Just to make that connection. Let's forget about anything and everything we've ever been taught about the heart. Let's not give it a definition. Let's not give it a box. Let's just wave sayonara to all the perceptions. Because when you get confused with love or emotion, they're two totally different paradigms. Now let's bring our consciousness from the heart up through the throat, front, middle, and back. Through the third eye, front, middle, and back, through the frontal lobe of the brain, the midbrain, the back of the brain, right and left sides of the brain, front, middle, and back, going all the way up through your crown chakra level vortex, all the way through the mass collective particles of consciousness, all the way up through the astral plane to consciousness, all the way to the sun. Let's just connect right there to the sun. Let's just hold our consciousness there. Just until everything starts to go into, I'll call it a theta brainwave, but it's pure manifestation. Now let's go beyond the sun, <clears throat> all the way into within and through your central sun intelligence, or shall I say the rest of yourself you as the facet of creator that you are, in the wholeness of all that is. Let's just be here, kind of like we're floating on the ocean on your back, just looking up to the star systems. Let's just let ourselves be held. Let's just let ourselves be embraced. Let's just let ourselves be completely, thoroughly surrounded, supported with ease and grace. More light which is pure light. Now, let's be here. Welcome home. Now, let's bring a stream of that consciousness from your central sun intelligence all the way through the physical sun. And let's just hold right there, letting it grow and grow and gain momentum. Now, let's bring it from the sun all the way down through the astral plane to consciousness through the mass collective consciousness down into within and through your crown chakra vortex with about 128 feet, or let's make it 150 feet in diameter. Coming right down through the central column of the body, through the crown, through the third eye, front, middle, and back, through the frontal lobe of the brain, midbrain, back of the brain, through the right and left sides of the brain, all the way down into within and through the atlas and axis vertebrae, through the cervical vertebrae, through the throat chakra level vortex, front, middle, and back. Now coming down through your shoulders, your upper arms, your lower arms, into the palms of your hands. Coming down through the sternum, in the upper back, 
the thoracic vertebrae all the way down within and throughout the heart once again. Let's just hold right there, front, middle, and back. Just to where we can let it speed up, speed up, vibrationally speaking, and vibrational frequencies in megahertz of light. Let it open, fill up, fill up, and now let's send it right down into and thin and through your solar plexus, front, middle, and back. Gathering more and more momentum, speeding up, opening up, accelerating with just more and more ease and grace. Coming all the way down through the lumbar vertebrae, down past your navel. And in the navel right now, let's just unplug all those hooks, all those cords that go all the way back to your connection, not just to your physical biological mother, but to the world. Let's just pull it out, done deal, done deal, done deal. Let's fill it up with you. Now going right down into within and through your crater shock level vortex, front, middle, and back. Going right down into the cossack, the sacrum and the cossacks, right through your root chuckle of vortex, down through the pelvic girdle, <clears throat> all the way down through your upper legs, lower legs, into your feet. And right now, let's just take another slow deep breath, inhale for 12, hold for 12. Exhale for 12, and on the exhale, let's push our palms together, our feet into the floor to let ourselves anchor in. And now let's just let ourselves expand to 150 feet in diameter. Your body being that of the crux, so your body is being the star, if you will, that emanates all this light to 150 feet in diameter. And I promise you, it just gets larger and larger. Now, we have two options. You as creator incarnate can command the manifestational world to fall into a certain alignment. I would like more than more of this. I would not like more of that. So thank you, but no, thank you. I would love this. I would love that on and on and on. Let it present, let it present. Or we can go into a different state of I want to know what I want, show me. And it's not just a mental, physical picture. You're saying, show me within sequences of events to start playing out in your live stream to allow for the manifestations to come in with that much more ease and grace. And right now, let's just all be clear that struggling is a choice. What is there really to struggle for? We can say the bills, we can call, say, survival, blah, blah, blah. But right now, let's all take a breath. Coming back to the relevance of right this millisecond. Right this millisecond, I want you to become aware that absolutely everything is taken care of. You're in a home, whatever that may look like for you. You're in this body on this planet and sustenance to give your body life is right there. Let's just inhale right now and just more and more particles of light and life force your natural birthright. Therefore, that already tells me everyone is open to receive because you're inhaling these particles of light, particles of consciousness. Now let's just hold and now let's just exhale. Just welcoming in on the exhale, more and more of you out with the old, in with the new. Out with the old energy, vows, contracts, and agreements, in with the new. So right now, <clears throat> I bind all entities, energy, thought forms, vows, contracts, and agreements, and up, out, and away from all these dear ones, mind, bodies, and auras now, from all four levels, all dimensions, every cell of their bodies now, up, out, and away from their cosmic record realms now, up, out, and away from all soul agreements, up, out, and away, and I command all soul agreements, resolved and dissolved now, and I bind it all to the sun to be repolarized for the good of all humanity, never to return, and I command your higher levels, your creator levels, your creator consciousness down, come right down into within and through your physical modality, your physical instrument now for your highest, best good and the highest, best good of all concern. And now ah, letting all those chains fall away. Now, let's just simply ask ourselves, who am I? What am I? What is it that I enjoy? Do I enjoy? Do I even know what joy feels like? Show me more, show me more, show me more. And namaste. That was fun. That was fun. I didn't um, expect that, but that was beautiful. Thank you so much. 
Um, yes. Yeah. That was like an activation. Those are some of the things we want to have happen on the weekend, that kind of um, activating of the viewers, because a lot of people will be doing that. Right, Sheila? Absolutely. And can you yeah. can you both imagine if everybody globally did that? What do you suppose is going to occur to the planetary matrix or even to the mass collective thought consciousness? If what if Absolutely. what's the question? If what all you of us did, if everyone on the event did that all at once, what do you suppose is going to happen to all the brother humanity, the planetary matrix, planetary that's, grid systems, the grids within grids? That's what we're hoping to find out. What will happen? Yeah, exactly. Let's I'm That's with right. you on that one, man. And connecting all these bridges of light that just go eternal. So once it goes through the planet, it goes through the universe, goes beyond the universe into your central sun intelligence, to your creator source consciousness. And then just you as creator are evolving and expanding upon yourself. So it goes further and further, more and more open, all the way to into the unmanifest realms and beyond. So for those people who are watching that may not be familiar with the central sun consciousness, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, when I look at the central sun, I look at all the facets, the core particles of pure divine, pure consciousness that is right there as a whole, as a collective of a whole that has split itself off, but there's still the source, the core right there. You being a part in a facet of the parts that were split off. And it's not like this was done on purpose. It happened when you picked up a body, you said, oh, one day, hmm, why don't we create a, <clears throat> a structure of our own, being that of the humanist form? I call it the form of the mammalian species. Now, to come into, to have a journey, because remember, you as creator, every thought you have, every journey you take, it's you as creator expanding upon yourself. Now we're bringing forth all the facets together as a wholeness once again, rather than split polarities, dualities, split levels of consciousness, and getting rid of all polarized structures, that's why now there's just the hypothetical split of the ego and the heart. But what, what do you suppose is going to occur when you as creator, as, as your central sun intelligence, as I call it, that's you as your total, complete, innate, finite knowingness, all coming back together in one and then ex expanding further in the holistic wholeness of your being. That's, that's part of the whole point of holistic medicine, right? It's the whole dear one, mental, physical, emotional, call it, quote, spiritual, which I call it you more than spiritual, because it is you, you are spirit. But coming together is that wholeness. And the point of going to the central sun intelligence, it's that feeling of home, home where there is not conflict, that is not debris, home where there's no separation, segregation. Not that I'm you or you're me, because we both are our own individualized facets, but how we come from the same source. And then how best to compliment and enjoy and laugh, really belly laugh together, even with even at yourself at times. Right. Of what you bought into. Right. This is good. This is good. So do you feel what what do you feel about the times we're moving into the change the earth the planet the civilization what, what's what do you feel is going on well you know it's it really excites me because i don't pretend like the process is easy i don't even pretend like it's pretty i don't pretend like it's ugly what i do see whether it's global weather changes whether it's fires, floods, earthquakes, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff's happening to shake out the density in the denser parts of the planet. Now, as we go here for a moment, it's kind of like, you know, I call it kind of like a game, right? How low do you have to go till you find you let go? You know, it's kind of like that, what's that one you where you dance under the stick and all that fun stuff, right? right. So the times that we're going into, you know, the times we're heading into is full of all that debris cracking up, dissolving, which is setting yourself free, but also setting the wholeness of all that is free, but also bringing it back into within and through into a new paradigm, a new energy, call it a clear slate of consciousness, where now we can start deliberately creating and enjoying more and more dear ones coming together if if you're interested in relationships, which is good, not good, doesn't really matter. Relationship with yourself and all that is and everyone. 
But if you go into the intimate loving relationship of heart, I'm watching more and more hearts coming together, fully marrying together. So we have your journey, their journey, and now the third journey, your journey together, <clears throat> without all the, yeah, I'm going to be the dominant, you're going to be the victim, or I'm going to be the dominatrix, you're going to be the victim, skipping all this hurrah of nonsense and going to the dance clubs where you're not just giving out all these lines like, you know, how odd it is to find you in a place like this, that kind of you know, one-liner stuff, to where it's really the hearts coming together rather than just the procreation game and sex, power, and greed game. That's what you're watching in religion. You're watching it with politics right now. All this stuff, and I want to guarantee none of this stuff's new. It's been there for millennia, eons, but how it's all, it's all coming right to the forefront to be exposed for long-term beneficial change. You know, rushing, rushing the capital, you know, it's a little bit bizarro land, but it's, it's a point, right? What do you truly cherish? What do you really take to heart? Are you going to be egoically upright and justified to fight for the cause? If you're fighting for the cause, you're in the wrong business because we're unfighting. Right. For fighting for peace does not make sense. Yes. No, it doesn't make sense. And I'm glad you brought that up, Alan, because it's like, okay, I'm going to go join the Peace Corps to fight for peace. Well, that's like two oxymorons right there. Right. Fighting and peace just don't go together. Right. <laughs> Neither yeah, was fluidity. Monday night, we um, had an interview with Barbara Hanclough. And she was oh, talking about the nine dimensions. And she was um, prefaced about the fifth dimension being the space of the heart. And as we move... Oh. Um, as a populace closer and closer to that fifth dimension, I think that a lot of what we're seeing are the struggles that we're having to get to that openness of the heart, because there has to be so much rebalancing. There has to be Beautiful. so much release, so much letting go, so much healing, so much forgiveness. And in times that we have been experiencing over the past few years, a lot of people have become extremely upset, become uh, disillusioned with government, the medical system, uh, responses from their families and friends. And we have, well, I see somewhat of a hardening. And so I'm seeing that this year is kind of like the cracking open of that hardening and things huh. begin often and we can release all of that so we can move into that fifth dimensional space within the heart oh absolutely because when i look at it personally you know what i'm presented with is the root is like you being in a body then you go to the creator shower vortex that's you opening your eyes and you as creator in a body now starting to explore then you go through the solar plexus that would be number three which is about survival Mm -hmm. And then you go to the heart, which is the fourth dimensional plane of the heart, love, emanation. And then you go through the throat, which now we're getting rid of all the blockages, egoically speaking, to allow the throat to pop wide open to where, hey, I can tell you I love you just because I love you. It doesn't mean I'm trying to come on to you. Now, from here, from here, it's where now we're going into the third eye, you know, so we have four, five, and now six, the third eye just sees through all the veils and all the hoopla to where you can just see and feel that love. Then you go through the crown into total unconditional, all that is, and being able to connect there, we'll call it unconditional love, but I don't care for that word a whole lot because it's so misinterpreted. So let's just say love that is pure, divine, doesn't mean you're going to be getting welcome tattooed onto your chest and laying on your front doorstep. It's actually the opposite. The more love you emanate, the more power that you, that you um, create. So earlier on, you began to talk a little bit about your integration process mm -hmm. of waking up to the fact of who you are. How long was your integration process? You know, I would. And of course, say, I know it's we're all still going and still bringing in energy, but that initial integration process. I know for myself when I picked up this body and I went through the two and a half years on and on, it was a whole circus of everything hitting a crescendo and collapsing mm -hmm. to the point of being right there, being told eight different times you're you need to get your affairs in order. So the part I loved about that, I'm not, I don't wish this on anyone per se, but it doesn't have to be that challenging or conflicting, but 
through that period, it was a stripping down of surrender. Now, many don't care for that term, and I get why, but you're not, what are you really surrendering to? You're surrendering to yourself without all the ego baggages. And that whole metamorphosis, the biggest part was two and a half years. The rest was about six years, 11 months, 24 days, 13 hours, 28 minutes, 12 seconds, 0.3 just to be specific. Wow. How did you derive that number? Because I was, I was tuning into it. And when I'm tuning oh, into okay. it, I'm watching this situation, that situation, that segment, that segment, all these parts that were stripping away as I was filling up my own embodiment, but no longer from the baggage. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So can you give us an idea of what you'll be sharing with us? Just a little bit, a taste of what you'll be sharing with us during the conference. Absolutely. I'm going to share with you more and more about the marriage of the higher and the lower, but I'm also going to share with you about your divinity and how to embody your divinity in this body, on this planet, through this world. You know, without all the ups and downs, without all the back and the forth, going back to fluidity, simplicity with ease and grace, and then igniting, activating, and accelerating how all of this affects your mind, body, your world, and, you know, where you're transcending all these lower levels and walking you through the transcendence at the same time, where you're transcending, but then you're activating, you're amplifying to open up your world and your heart and your eyes with ease and grace, rather than playing the push my button game. Great. So one of the goals and one of the hopes that we have from this conference is through all of the different activations that will be presented, that we will, in fact, be able to make a difference and to affect and to send out new frequency into that collective consciousness in such a way that, first off, people begin to understand who they are at their soul mm -hmm. level, that they understand that um, there is family out there that we are with the Wish Alliance, we're, we're out there ready to support them, but more importantly, that we're able to affect a change. And so many people talk about change these days and moving into those higher realms of consciousness, moving into 5D and beyond. And I'm wondering, do you get any feedback from um, your guides or your higher connections as to uh, what humanity is, um, what we need to yet work through before we can move into those realms and possibly how quickly you see that occurring? Yeah, when I look at it and when I'm presented with it, with it from my entourage, what I'm looking at is for humanity to wake up to a point where you start, where you discontinue looking at your differences and starting to look at your commonalities. Look at the dear ones around you as your equal. Doesn't, it's not based in finances, not based in Enlightenment Olympics, superiority complexes, but looking at everyone and everything as your equal. That's gonna create a huge chasm. And I'm looking at that you know, even through the conference, but also after the conference for the next, yeah, good nine to about 14 months, you know, where everything is going to continue to evolve and evolve and evolve within yourself and through yourself, but how you're also going to be able to be steered and journey through each and every event without getting caught up in it, but being the difference within it and through it, but not on your own island. You're skipping the island effect and you're looking more the hey, you know what? Hey, I've been there, done that. Word teacher, and hey, you know what? If you want it to be different, then why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And you so much more and so much more light hitting the grid system, hitting the planet and also coming up from the core of the planet. Because if you notice, everything's collapsing from the inside and the outside and it's going poof. Now it's just a matter of being able to dance through it, as I call it, and flow through it without being, like without the ego trying to take a bite of something that has nothing to do with you. And it's not even about a battle of the ego. It's the dissolvement of the ego. Beautiful. Once we created another, another battle, well, it's already got you. <laughs> That's true. That's right. 
Wow. So this weekend, what do you see energetically? How do you want to approach the walk-in theme? I'm just curious. Well, when I look at it, it said, okay, everyone's a walk-in. They walked in sometime. Right. And where where we all come together, because when I look at it from an energetic view, it looks like 5,000 prisms, like pyramids, all lit up and connecting to the whole universe and beyond, bringing back through. But in prisms as, a, as it is, they're already amplifiers. It's being quadruple, quadrupled, and multi-quadrupled to create amplified, 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 amplification, amplification. And then with all 5,000 of all those uh, pyramidal structures or prisms, I'm looking at all of them connecting and just creating a huge amplification, like a big flame going throughout the whole planet. Beautiful, beautiful. A flame and... of divination and purification and passion. Because it goes from purple to red, reddish, orange to yellow. <laughs> what does? What colors? Where are you seeing those colors? If you notice, like if I hear, I got a, it's not the planet, but it is a Cosmo. So if you can notice like a hand underneath the planet, but the hand coming up is a major flame from all of these different prisms that are connecting, that is creating such a huge emphasis in amplification to create all the grids the in because there's more than just one planetary grid there's quadrillions of them and they're all intermeshed but going through the source core of it and creating such a beautiful amplification through the crash of the planet but also the flame going through it as well because for one you already are that flame of purification divination and passion now we're taking it global to affect the whole big giant planetary matrix so we have this flame coming up and through the purification divination but it isn't how it goes exponentially into the rest of the universe rest of the planetary constellations and all the way through the cosmos that are activating all of that simultaneously Nice. It nice. creates a quicker rotational belt of this whole solar system. And then whoosh, more openness is coming beyond the solar system to collapse the veils that make it look empty, because boy, is it not empty, but it collapses those veils just open to more and more wow. unfolding and then expanding. That really seems like the next level, doesn't it, Sheila? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so excited about this conference because within myself, I just, you know, I feel it's, it's kind of like a herald that something's getting ready to happen, that we're on the cusp of breaking through some oh. type of an unseen veil, whether it's a veil of resistance or a veil of, you know, movement, but we're going to be able to make a significant impact this weekend. And William, I'm so excited that you're going to be part of that with us. Oh, me too. And thank you so much. It's such an honor to be invited. So thank you so much. Thank, well, thank you. you. Yes, William, for all the work you've done all those years since you have uh, had that little bump and boom, here you are, right? <laughs> exactly. And no looking back. At <laughs> I, I, I always look at it as we're still just beginning. Yes, yes, yes. So this is, we're talking about the walk-in conference this weekend, January 8th, 9th, 2022, could sign up at portal to ascension.org, uh, use the discount promo code PTA25, get 25% off. And William, I think you're going to meet a lot of great people there. Do you know some of the people coming? Yeah, yeah. I know um, Karen Swaim. Okay. And I don't have the paperwork right in front of me, but there was another, a few others that look very familiar. Good. Including yourself. We're trying to bring together a big community here. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, any, anything else you want to say? I That's just thank everyone for tuning in again. And please, if you have not registered, do so today. And when is William speaking? What day? William is speaking on Sunday. If memory serves me correctly, I can pull that up real quickly. And he'll also be on the panel after his talk. So Most That's definitely. correct. Uh, from two to three Pacific time on Sunday right. afternoon. Well, awesome, right. awesome. All right, William, looking forward to it. Thank you. We'll do, 
And we want people to do activations because we want people watching to really have an experience. So that's what you do. Yeah. And life altering big time. There's no, there's no looking back. Yes. No, no going back home. That's right. right. What you know, you know. Exactly. You can't can't unknow what you know. That's That's right. right. Well, Sheila, thank thank you again for, you know, being so sweet and gracious and, just um, just yourself, you know, putting it out there. Sheila really brought this conference together because of her dramatic walk-in experience. And, and it's really helped a lot of people the last two years. So, and her book and, and there's more. Sheila, Sheila is a manifesting creator. So um, happy to be working with you, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank, Thank you, you, Alan. Thank you, William. Looking forward to seeing you again this weekend. And great to see you. It was a couple of years, but I'm happy, happy you're still <laughs> doing your thing. And, and likewise, my good friend, likewise. Thank you. It's Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. Oh, tonight I'm doing a predictions astrology panel. I'll send, yes, I'll send you a link to that. And that you can find awesome. it on, on this channel at, well, as well at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Sheila? That's it. Thanks so much, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, William. Thank you.